This next tune will be for inclusion in an album called Manhattan Comes Alive. Amazing Jake, how sweet the sound my singing is to me. If being an officer of the law had instilled anything in me, it was a healthy curiosity for bloody and mangled car hoods. I was sure Jake would have a simple explanation. It was a desert ghost. What? Well, I definitely hit something, and then when I got out and looked around, there was nothing there. <laughs> Can't we stop now? I'm already upset enough about the car, which was a gift from Elvis. Since desert ghost seems to be Jake's explanation for everything, I thought I should look into it further. Hey, Tiffany, want to ride home? I saw everything that happened, and I'm disgusted. Your dad's not gonna teach you how to get to the ladies. Looks like I'll have to. We'll tell you a story about a young boy named Jake, Cub. <clears throat> now, he is just about your age when his parents took in an exchange student from the Philippines. Jakey, you wanna go bang bang? She taught Jacob many valuable things, things you learn from American servicemen and dimly lit alleys and vacant lots of Manila. What were we talking about? You were teaching me how to score with the ladies. Oh, right, kid. Ladies love dangerous men, flashy men. See, you gotta cultivate your attitude, Atticus. You be disrespectful, be reckless. I don't know. Well, I do. And I got a medicine chest full of sulfur drugs to prove it. Historically, vultures were not a harbinger of good news. This was no exception. After seeing the dead body, all I could think of was Jake's badly damaged Cadillac. And although I had promised myself never to interact with Jake more than once a day, I knew I had to question him. Do we have to do this now? I'm in the middle of a colonic. Just breathe. Besides, I didn't kill anyone. Look, Jake, this is much harder for me than it is for you, but uh, I found a dead body on the side of the road, and the front of your car is banged up and covered in blood. Believe me, Daniel, if I'd killed a man, buried his body in a shallow grave on the side of the road, I think I'd know. Just push. I do believe you, Jake. And I hate to do this, but I need you to come down to the office for some questioning. Daniel, I understand you're only doing your job. But could you give me a little time to get myself together? I'd like to come down there with my dignity intact. Sure, how is a half an hour? Perfect. At first, I didn't know if Jake would try to make a run for it. But thinking back on the number of third-rate criminals the man played in his long film career, I decided it was a safe bet. Luckily, there was only one road out of town. After Jake tried to run, he was considered a flight risk and transferred to county where he would await trial. I visited Jake as soon as I could. I dreaded seeing what jail had done to the man. Is this a great color on me or what? Really nice, Jake. Yeah, I had to decide between an extra large and a large. I, I settled on the large. I hope it doesn't shrink in the wash. Listen, Jake, I'm really sorry about all this. Maybe I was a little out of line with that whole fleeing to Mexico thing. <laughs> yeah. Running for the border isn't the best way of proving your innocence. I panicked, but I'm innocent. Besides, 
When's the last time you saw a big Hollywood celebrity get convicted of murder? Fatty Arbuckle. <laughs> hey, is there anything I can do for you? You use a few things from my house. Um, hair gel, body lotion, massage oil. Massage oil? Yeah, I know how things work here in prison. You know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Well, and I bet the boys would like to hear some of my personal recordings. Grab all my tapes, too. Jake didn't know it, but real jail was nothing like the way it was portrayed in his many prison musicals. Oh, and have that kid of yours uh, pick up my mail and water my plants. Uh, Mr. Manhattan. What? The guard said you demanded to see me. Hmm. Well, yes, the uh, conditions in my cell are deplorable. Now, I don't know when it happened, but somebody knocked down the walls around my toilet. None of the toilets have walls, and nobody gets special treatment. Look, I understand. You know, I played a warden not unlike yourself in A Warden's Love. I was strict, but fair. I'm sorry, Mr. Manhattan. No exceptions. I can't pee in front of other men. Well, you're just gonna have to get used to it. You could be here for a very, very long time. Maybe you should think about turning your life around. Sorry, we ran out of Bibles. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I should bring Jake all the items he had requested. Pretty boys never do well in prison. And with his assortment of oils, lotions, and unguents, Jake was destined for trouble. Amazing, Jake. Oh, they're gonna kill him. Got those things, yeah. Jake, what happened? I fell down a flight of stairs, I think. I have some bad news. I took a look at the prosecutor's case. They found the guy's sneaker lodged in the grill of your car. Well, that's not much to go on. And his parka was wrapped around your front axle. You're gonna build a case on that. They found your Cadillac emblem embedded in his cheek. Is there anything you can tell me about that night? Anything that might help? Maybe I'm guilty, maybe I'm innocent. Maybe I did kill that guy. That doesn't help. I'm a cold-blooded murderer. All right, just sit tight. Hey, I'm gonna try and help you through this, all right? Grace. Way to go, Daniel. Where'd you find her? In the yellow pages. God bless America. Hey, this is her first time. Oh, I owe you big time, Daniel. I won't forget this. I didn't know they allowed conjugal visits in prison. Jake, this is your lawyer. You sure I should be having sex with my lawyer? <sighs> I decided to look over the prosecution's evidence didn't look good for Jake. But there were a few things that didn't make sense. The man was wearing a heavy down parka on a hot night. And the coroner's report listed the man as 5'6", but his driver's license said he was 6'4". Also, he had a used ticket stub from the Allman Brothers 2000 concert in Las Vegas the night he was killed. How could he have gotten here from Vegas that fast? I don't know if it was the possibility of Jake spending his life in prison, or the idea of the Allman Brothers playing without Dwayne but I felt sick to my stomach. Well, why don't you take the socks, too, while you're at it? Okay, see, sarcasm's totally wasted on you. Pull! Did we miss the M80 in the hot tub? Dude, that was this morning. You can stay if you want. Mr. Manhattan is going to be out of town for a long time. It's so neat, my first case is a murder case. And guess what? What? My parents even came. They're videotaping the whole thing. Uh, Ms. Lang, <clears throat> about your defending me. I'll be back in a sec. 
I think I'm gonna Ralph. Jake, I found some inconsistencies in the prosecution's case. Daniel, I... I'm gonna lay my faith with Allah. But Jake, you're Presbyterian. Not anymore. Last night I read the Quran cover to cover. Well, skimmed some, but read mostly. And it really spoke to me. Especially the part where Allah says he'll take care of all my problems for me. So you can see I won't be needing your help anymore. Jake, I don't think this is a good idea. Daniel, you are a fine sheriff. But your powers are no match for those of Allah. He'll win the case for me. Everybody, cross your fingers. We're going to need a lot of luck. Thanks, little lady. But Allah doesn't need luck. Your Honor, I will be defending myself. We intend to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jake Manhattan is guilty of murder in the second degree. We have clear proof that he was driving 125 miles per hour when he hit the victim. Allah objects. Mr. Manhattan, neither you nor Allah may object during the opening statements. Now, you can pretty much see this trial's been bought and paid for. Please, Mr. Manhattan, sit down. Now, I don't know what happened that night, but I'm pretty sure I didn't do it. Mr. Manhattan? What I am sure of is that when Mohammed was tested, Allah shouted down from the heavens, Fear not, Mohammed, for I will protect and guide you through this court case. But they're trying to slap you with a murder rap because you were out driving around one night, minding your own business. Mr. Manhattan, please. Thank you very much. I went back to the crime scene to try to find something that would help Jake. But all I found was more of the wreckage and a bloody ear. Oh, hey, Dad. How's Jake Stroud going? Not well. Besides the other evidence against him, it turns out he was speeding. What are you doing in Jake's car? How fast was he driving? 125. What are you doing in Jake's car? 125 miles per hour on this road? What are you doing in Jake's car? That's impossible. All he can go is 45 miles an hour in this car. The stretch of road isn't long enough. How do you know that? Well, I've been trying to make the speedometer go all the way around. Atticus is the fastest driver in the world. If Jake wasn't going that fast, then maybe there was another explanation. Well, see you, Dad. Uh, Atticus, can I talk to you for a second? Sure, Dad. Can I see your driver's license? Dad, I don't have a driver's license. Yeah, okay. You take Jake's car back to Jake's house and don't drive it again. Then you water the plants, grab the mail, and head home. Dad. Atticus, go. I would have to deal with Atticus later. For now, there were more important things to worry about. Besides, it was nothing I hadn't done at his age to impress the ladies. Jake, I don't think Muslims are supposed to eat pork. I'm on trial for murder, for God's sake. Cut me some slack. How are things going in court? Allah's not turning out to be the lawyer I hoped he'd be. Jake, I found some things in this case that don't add up, and I need more time to make sense of them. Do you think you can stall in court while I do some more digging? I don't know. I'm not real good at that sort of thing. I remember in 1973, I was under contract to MGM, and they wanted me to do a Although he probably I... didn't consider it stalling, they Jake could stall with the best of them. Now then, when you say second cousin, are you talking about your cousin's child or your cousin's cousin? Because in some states, it's considered all right to marry a second cousin of the first branch. Mr. Manhattan, I suggest you move things along. Tomorrow's the last day for you to present your case. Uh, may I remind your honor that my life is at stake here? Just the same, Mr. Manhattan. I think you should pick up the pace. No, I'll be damned. <laughs> my sandal's undone. <laughs> 
There's gasoline in the pool. Awesome! Where are you going? Going home, Atticus. You're too dangerous. I mean, somebody's gonna get hurt. I could be less dangerous. I don't think you can, Atticus. I mean, at first it was fun, but now it's just scary. Besides, you don't have any eyebrows. I still couldn't put it all together. What would cause a man to shrink 10 inches? And what was he doing in the middle of nowhere? How could he have gotten here from Las Vegas so quickly? Where was he going? Where did he come from? Could he have fallen out of the sky? I had already ruled out the simple explanations. And as I believe a wise Vulcan named Spock once said, when all reasonable explanations have been exhausted, only the unreasonable explanation remains. I knew I'd be haunted for the rest of my life by what I heard on that tape. But if listening to Jake singing was the price I had to pay to get him out of jail, so be it. So, as you can see, this man clearly died on impact after falling out of an airplane, and not from the impact of an oncoming car. Wait a minute! You asking me to believe that a body fell out of a plane onto the hood of my car? <laughs> It's ludicrous. Jake, what? shut up. Well, it seems a bit iffy to me, but if you're confident. And at what rate would somebody hit the ground if they fell out of a plane, Dr. Keeler? Maximum velocity would be exactly 125 miles per hour. Oh, my God. It's the same speed that the body in Jake's car impacted. So. Is that what made his body shrink 10 inches? Oh, absolutely. It seems like this gentleman's plan was a little, um, short-sighted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collins, as a special investigator for the Federal Aviation Administration, you've investigated all manner of airplane accidents. That's correct. Have you ever seen an incident where someone tried to get a free flight by sneaking into the wheel well of a plane? Yes, I have. It actually happens more often than you'd think. Every year, there are several incidents of that nature. There are some really stupid people out there. Sustain! Mr. Manhattan, please. Can you think of any reason this man would have been wearing a parka? Well, yes. It gets extremely cold at 30,000 feet. In fact, many of these people actually freeze to death, and when the landing gear hatch opens, it's bombs away. Was there anything unusual about the parka? Yes. It was covered in grease, the same kind that's used on the landing gear of a 747. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a decision? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant not guilty. <laughs> Fine. Muslim gets a fair trial. Now I can get out of these ridiculous clothes and go get a drink. What about Allah? Oh, Allah and I had a deal. I believe in him, he'd get me out of jail. I believed, I'm out. Deal's over. Jake, I'm so sorry. I don't know what has gotten into Atticus. Looks like somebody was trying to impress the girls. What are you talking about? I had a little talk with Atticus about how to get to the ladies. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I'll have Atticus fix everything. Yeah. He did it for love. Doesn't look like anybody got hurt. I mean, he's a harmless kid. Yeah. Atticus! Are you all right? He's a maniac! Driving around with no regard for anybody else, not looking where he's going, he could have killed me. I mean, he should be grounded, severely grounded. Thank you, Jake. I'll take it from here. Atticus, get in the car. Wait. How'd it go with the girl? She said I was too dangerous. Yeah, I see. He's just gonna have to be more dangerous next time. I don't know. Being dangerous is tiring. And scary. So I think I'm just gonna go home and draw on some eyebrows. Wuss. You'll need this. Got me through many a lonely night. Maybe I was being naive, but Jake might have actually learned something from the teachings of Allah. Hi, Jake. 
I'm glad you hookers could make it on such short notice. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> I've had a hard week. You know what it's like having big, hairy men breathe down your neck. I'm gonna need the full treatment. But the Quran was a complex book with hundreds of pages and probably required several readings for one to truly appreciate its many gifts. Stay tuned for an informative message from one of the stars of Manhattan AZ. Hi, I'm Brian McNamara of Basic Cable's Manhattan AZ. In tonight's episode, we dealt with the very serious subject of involuntary manslaughter. Sadly, the frequency of this problem has reached epidemic proportions in this country. And what makes involuntary manslaughter so difficult for lawmen to stop is that it is, for want of a better word, involuntary. No one knows when it's gonna happen next. It's never planned. So basically, all we're talking about here is an accident. And accidents do happen. And sometimes, people get killed. It's a pretty simple equation, really. Carelessness plus bad luck plus more bad luck equals involuntary manslaughter. And when you look at it like that, it's barely a crime. So why is there even a trial? Just to waste your tax dollars? So please write to your congressman and urge them to take this petty legal infraction off the books. Because when your brakes go out and you drive your SUV into the rec room of a senior center, well, you're going to be glad you did. I know because I work in television, and we know better than you. I'm Brian McNamara. Good night.